It's on. It's on. Good morning, everyone. It is time to begin our morning worship here at Holmes Road. Singing 615. 615. Mm. Let us sing. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with a pace, be still. In all of life's ebbs and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of His grace, resting neath His sheltering wings, always looking on His smiling face. That is why I shout and sing. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me far beyond the sheltering sky. I shall wing my flight to wells unknown. I shall live with him on high. Jesus, 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 Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go Amen. Morning, church. How's everybody doing this morning? Good? Good, good, good to see everybody with our liquid sunshine we got out there. Seems we got plenty of that, huh? Lots of rain. That's all right. That's good for us, but hopefully we'll see some sun. Uh, we want to welcome everybody to the service this morning. If you're visiting with us, please fill out a visitor card so we have a record of your attendance. Um, if you're not visiting with us, you should be. On Facebook, we want to welcome those on Facebook. And um, in terms of announcements, we do have a couple to make note of here real quick. Um, in your bulletin, please ensure the, uh, the dates are recognized there for the next ministry meeting on the May 22nd, the Southside Kitchen on the 24th, and then the 29th will be our first time we uh, take our, bring our small groups together for the uh, uh, fifth Sunday potluck in uh, congregational singing. So. Also, um, small groups, I believe several of them are postponing this today's or, dis, or canceling today's activities to support the shower. Um, the shower is at 3 o'clock, so uh, I know the Camerata small group and the, uh, um, what's your name again? Uh, Carter, Carter small group are, are doing so. I believe the John, or the um, Miller would be as well. I'm not sure if Roger's. Is, is active or not so but anyways we want to make sure that we uh, support that activity as well welcome back we got welcome back announcements we had to make a quick correction on the anniversary it's 59 years will be 60 years next year uh, for Gary and Elizabeth and we want to welcome back them to the to church and and Shannon's with us here this morning again Shannon welcome back to you okay um, and then as always uh, we celebrate our graduates 
uh, sometime in, in, looks like we're looking in uh, probably June, right? Um, we know of two graduates right now. Uh, we, always, we always seem to find some more. So if you are a graduate or know of a graduate that will be celebrating with us here at Holmes Road, please get that information as surely as soon as possible. So. Uh, the final announcements I have is related to uh, the clothing closet. Um, the group asked, please sign up in the lobby for help on Saturday, May 13th. We need two-hour shifts for this important meeting, so, or this important work. The clothes closet is a very active part of the church right now, so if you could support that and work, to work a couple shifts, we'd appreciate it. So. And those of you may have noticed, yes, I am wearing a boot. Uh, it's not a fashion statement. Uh, it's called medical force compliance. Uh, when you don't listen to a doctor, you don't seek medical attention appropriately, uh, these bodies of ours are weak, so they require... I've, I've got Achilles tendon that's very near to rupturing, so uh, rather than do that, we put a boot on it. So, uh, One other announcement that was handed to me. Um, if you have a vehicle uh, that uh, is possibly... Uh, Annette Gentry is looking for a vehicle for her granddaughter. Um, she's attending, uh, be attending college, so they're looking for a vehicle to pick up for her. So if, if you have a vehicle that uh, you might uh, like her to consider, please see Annette or, or one of the elders. So with that, we'll send it back to Worship Songs with Ruben. Thank you. Oh, by the way, those that you are following the bulletin, if you're visiting, I'm not Brother Miller, but Brother Miller's traveling this week, so. Four hundred and sixty-four. Four hundred and sixty-four. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lived. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know And life is worth the living just because he lived. And then one day I'll cross that river, I'll fight life fine, no war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, 
I'll see the light of glory and I know he reigns because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know And life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Now is the time of our service for scripture reading and prayer. And uh, today's scripture reading is gonna be taken from Matthew, the seventh, 17th chapter, uh, verse number five. Matthew, the 17th chapter, verse number five. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Let us bow. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today, Father. We thank you for giving us the breath and the strength to uh, be able to wake up to this day. But most of all, Father, we thank you so much for your son. Father, your son who gave his life that we may have life eternal, uh, that we have the opportunity to be with you in glory, Father, and also that we can come directly to you whenever we have something on our minds that, that we need to either repent or, or just, just to have a little talk with you, Father. And we thank you so much for that. And Father, as we go throughout today, Father, and, and Stan comes to bring the message, Father, let those be your words and not his, Father. And let us carry those words in our hearts and, and let us be a light that we can shine and shine our light on others and others may see you in us. Father, let us always be ever mindful of the love that you gave us and the love that we should be giving others. Guide us and lead us in all that we do and bless us and keep us. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. <clears throat> the next number is 1009. Let us sing. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible sweet sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound retreat. He is shifting up our hearts from men for his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. 
Glory, glory, hallelujah, our God is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea, with the glory on his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us teach to make men free, while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah, while God is marching on. Amen. The song before the Lord's Supper this morning will be eight, 383, 383. <clears throat> Jesus, keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my rapture soul shall find rest beyond the a trembling soul, love and mercy found me, there the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me. In cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my rapture soul shall find rest beyond the cross, O Lamb of God, bring it seems before me, help me walk from day to day, with its shadows o'er me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. In my rapture soul shall find rest beyond the
It is uh, the time of our service where we uh, celebrate communion. Did everyone get a communion cup? If, if not, raise your hand and we'll have someone bring one to you. All right. Uh, to prepare us for communion, I'd like to read from Romans, Romans 5, specifically verses 6 through 11. Uh, in that, uh, it reads... For while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous person, though perhaps for the good person someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For it was while we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved. And not only this, but we also celebrate in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Uh, In this passage, I think Paul does a great job of summarizing uh, our faith and why we take communion every week when we take the bread that represents Jesus' body that was um, uh, crucified for us and and the blood that was poured out. And uh, As we consume these things, we proclaim uh, that Jesus was the Son of God and our faith in him and our salvation that we receive through that. Let's go to God in prayer now for the bread. Father God, we come before you this morning thankful. Thankful that you have reached your hand out to us and and provided a path to you through your son, Jesus. As we take this bread, which represents his body, help us to uh, recognize the significance of this sacrifice um, and all that you have done for us. And it's in your son, Jesus' name, that we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer for the juice. Father God, we come before you again, ever thankful, uh, acknowledging you as the God of the universe, the one and only, uh, the one that has uh, the power to save. Uh, Please help us to clear our thoughts of of this world and and focus solely on you during this time. uh, As we take this juice, which represents your son's blood that he shed for us on the cross. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Apart from the Lord's Supper, we now uh, enter the time the elders have set aside for us to have the opportunity to give back to the uh, work of the church here at Holmes Road. We'll go ahead and uh, say a prayer for, we got it right here in the back. Oh, Joe. All right, now now we're ready. Let's uh, let's all go to God in prayer for uh, the, the, the uh, giving. Father God, we thank you. Uh, you have blessed us far beyond what we deserve so abundantly. And we acknowledge that all those blessings come from you, Lord. We acknowledge that our our health, our ability to, uh, our our talents, our abilities to earn income and serve others all come from you, Lord. Uh, We'd ask that you would instill in us the heart of a cheerful giver, that we may give freely of our time, our talents, and, and our money. We'd ask that you would take these gifts, Lord, that you would bless them, multiply them, 
and help them to grow your kingdom through the work here at Holmes Road. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The song of encouragement for this morning will be 943, 943. This is after Stan's lesson this morning. 458 will sing before. <clears throat> Let us sing. Sweet is the song I'm singing today. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Trouble and sorrow have vanished away. I have been, I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine, Christ is mine. All to him I now resign. I have been, I have been redeemed. Great is my joy. As onward I go, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. All the way homeward, my praises shall flow. I have been, I have been redeemed, I'm redeemed. By love divine, glory, glory, Christ is mine, Christ is mine, all to him I now resign, I have been, I have been redeemed. Precious indeed, my Savior to me, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, happy and glory, someday I shall be, I have been, I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine, Christ is mine. All to him I now resign. I have been, I have been redeemed.
Thank you, Brother Reuben. Appreciate those fine songs this morning, and good morning, church. Good to see everybody here. We appreciate all those that are here, and we appreciate those that are joining us online. Uh, I want you to know that even though the small groups are, or some of the small groups uh, have canceled because of the, the thing tonight, there still will be a PM sermon posted, so you and your families can watch uh, after the after the thing or the, after the shower or before the shower or whatever but it'll be on there so you can worship uh, uh, this evening at your convenience continuing the hebrew study and so you have those discussion questions there uh, that you could just run in your own mind you can just have fun with yourself uh, tonight uh, uh, and i think that probably be the same thing next week i won't this is obviously my last week before i go on vacation for a couple weeks i'll be gone the next two sundays same thing i'm still going to be posting the pm sermons and whether you meet or not, you you have the discussion questions. I, I think some of the small groups won't be meeting for Mother's Day either. But uh, but you will be able to watch on your when you at your convenience uh, the when the PM sermons come for the next two weeks as well. <coughs> Appreciate your your willingness to uh, let me have that vacation time. Luke's graduating, and so we're going to go down there and to Lubbock for his graduation. It'll be a great time. Uh, last week we began to look at a new sermon series called The Portraits of Jesus as painted by John. We talked about the fact that, that John in his book is a, really a, a piece of art and he, he creates all these different looks at Jesus and, and each identity and how he's presenting Christ is a piece of art into itself. And so that's what we're going to be doing over the next several weeks is looking at the different pieces of art that John has painted for us to understand Jesus better. We're walking through John's art gallery, which is the book of John, to see how he presents Jesus to us. And we looked last week at portrait number one, if you will, and that was the word and the light, uh, the word, logos, right, and light of the world. We talked about all of that from last week. And this week, we're going to get into portrait number two, if you will, from the book of John. And we're going to be looking at chapter two, Verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> in chapter 2, 1 through 11, we know it's Jesus' uh, first miracle. It's the miracle of the water to wine. But there's a lot of stuff going on there that I think most people reading through uh, that don't realize what's going on. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about that. John is painting a marvelous picture of who Jesus is within this story of the miracle of the water to wine. So if you have there, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to John chapter 2. Let's start by just reading the first couple of verses. It said, On the third day a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples had been invited to the wedding. Now I think just looking at these couple of verses, we understand that there's this wedding going on in Galilee. It's this wonderful wedding, it's a wonderful time of joy and party. <coughs> Jesus' mother there, and he, he and his disciples are invited to the wedding. Now I think that's a very important concept right there, is that fact that Jesus was invited. That tells us a lot, and like we're talking about John painting a picture of who Jesus was. I think just seeing that Jesus was invited to the party lets us in to know who Jesus was. Jesus was invited to the wedding. It's not like he crashed it. It's not like he asked to go. He was invited. He was asked to come. And I think that is a very important lesson for us to know that he and his disciples, he and his people, were the kind of people you wanted to have at a party. I think that's a very important point right there. I think too many times we look at Christians being very serious people. We don't laugh a lot because we're always serious. I think a lot of times people look at Christians and say, Those are, they just want to pray and read their Bibles and, and, and shake their finger at you when you do wrong. And that's not the kind of people you want to bring to a party, is it? When you want to bring someone to a party, you want to bring somebody that's really likable, who's fun, who's adding some fun to the party. And the fact that people looked at Jesus and his people and said, hey, come and be at our wedding, they, that tells you a lot about who Jesus was. 
Jesus and his people were not spoilers of a good time. They weren't Debbie Downers. They weren't the kind of people who threw water on the fire of a good party. They were invited. People wanted them there. Jesus was the kind of person that when joy and fun was going on, he wanted him along. I picture Jesus as a, as a guy who could really make people laugh. The sense of humor is one of God's gifts, right? And if he's the son of God, I bet he could really make you laugh at times. If you've been in our Bible classes, uh, maybe on Wednesdays or on Sunday mornings, we've been talking about how many times even in the text, Jesus will cut a joke every now and then. Now, we may not realize it, but there was a lot of times Jesus was trying to be funny. And, uh, and so he was the kind of person that people wanted at a party. He brought blessings to a party. And I wonder if this is the case with us. Do people want you to be at a party because you're just a fun person? You're a fun, loving guy who brings joy and laughter? Or are you the serious people? We don't have time for laughter. We need to pray. That's not who Jesus was. He could combine ultimate spirituality with fun. He knew how to do that. We need to be that same. I think there's a great lesson in just understanding that aspect of Jesus within itself. Jesus knew how to have fun at a party. People wanted him there. Let's look at verses 3 through 5 together. <coughs> in verses 3 through 5 says, When the wine was gone... Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, folks, we just read three verses, but I'm not sure we understand all the real drama that's going on here in this verse. And we need to talk about it. First of all. The party is in full swing. All the guests are there. The party's great. And they run out of wine. Uh-oh. Now, for us today, well, that wouldn't mean that much. You know, the party ran out of wine, so what? Break out the Dr. Pepper. Or, you know, it's whatever it is, right? Who cares? But back then, that was a major social mistake. That was a big-time oops in that society. The shame of that it, running out of wine, we got to understand the shame of that would have haunted this marriage for years to come. That was a big time no-no in that particular culture and society because rabbis taught, the, Jews, the Jewish rabbis at the time always taught that wine was a symbol of joy. And so to have the wine run out at a wedding was basically a symbol saying the joy in this thing is gone. The, the, these two people who are being wed, they're going to run out of joy. It was like a curse. And they were going to have to live with that curse in all of society. No, people were just waiting for them to get, get done because of the whole symbolism of running out of wine. It was a big time social mistake. Running out of wine was a curse on the wedding indicating that neither the guests, the bride, nor the groom wouldn't have any joy in the marriage. Look at the, what I, rec I have this quote here from Morris, who's an incredible uh, anthropologist, historian of the biblical times. And he says this, he says, In the ancient Near East, there was a strong element of reciprocity about weddings. And that, for example, it was possible to take legal action in certain circumstances against the man who failed to provide the appropriate wedding gift. It means that when the supply of wine failed, more than social embarrassment was involved, the bridegroom and his family may have well become involved in heavy legal liability. So not only was it a major social mistake, but the families would have been so at angry the family the bride would have been like you insulted the wedding you insulted someone they could have sued for the value of the wedding and the wedding gift and all that stuff it could have been a legal issue so this was a massive problem to run out of wine at the wedding this isn't just some little oops this was a massive major embarrassment a curse upon the wedding 
and could have been even legal action taken in the courts over such an insult to the family. So this is a major problem. And what does Mary do with the problem? I think this is a great lesson for us. Mary takes the problem to Jesus. That's what she does. She sees what's going on. She understands all the ramifications. She understands all what's going on. And she says, I need to take this issue to the problem solver. The problem solver is my son, Jesus. He can fix whatever problem there is. She knew that Jesus had the ability to fix the shame, the pain, the embarrassment, the legal consequences, everything that would have come. <coughs> she knew there was one person to turn to. There was one person who could fix any situation. And that was Jesus Christ. And I wonder if we do the same thing. Are we as intelligent as Mary? When we have problems that come up in our life, are we like Mary and say, I need to run this, I need to go to Jesus. I need to handle my, I need to give all of my problems over to Christ because he's the only one that can fix it. I think too many times we're running to lawyers. We're running to friends. We're running to family. We're running to all these uh, other people. And Jesus says, bring it to me. I'm the ultimate problem solver. Bring it to me. Mary knew where to turn when there was this problem that has arisen. And so Mary says, Mary looked at him and she says, uh, they have no more wine. She took the problem to Jesus. And then what does Jesus say? What is Jesus' response when Mary brings the problem to him? He says, woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. Now, folks, this is a major reply here that we need to understand what's going on. He calls her woman, not mother. Now, this is a very subtle thing that's going on here. They're at a party. Jesus, is, Jesus doesn't want to create a scene, but he's talking to his mom. And he said, instead of referencing her as mother, he calls her woman. Now, why on earth? Would he do that? A lot of people read this and say, well, how rude. Right? I mean, if Matthew, if Jan was talking to Matthew and, and Matthew said, look, woman. He would have my handprints on him, right? There's some rudeness going on there. So is that what Jesus is going on here? Well, no. There is no rudeness meant here from Jesus. What Jesus is simply saying here is, Mom, you came to me with this problem, but you know, as well as I do, the only way to fix it is for me to use some miraculous powers. And if I'm going to do that, that's going to change our relationship. What he is letting Mary know, what Jesus is saying here is, if I were to do this, I'm no longer going to be your son. This mother-son relationship we've had all these years, that's going to be done. I am no longer going to be your son anymore. I am going to be the son of God. If I employ these powers, if I fix this situation, we change. We will change. Mom, are you ready to give up me being your son, your physical son? Are you ready to meet... Are you ready for me to become the Messiah? Are you ready for me to switch roles? You're no longer going to be my mom in that sense. You're going to be my follower. Are you ready to give me up as son and accept me as the son of God? This is what he's saying with this response. Are you ready? If you want me to fix this, I'm going to use the powers of God and everything's going to be different. If I do this, Mary, it's going to set a chain of events. It's going to start my ministry. It's going to, three years from now, I'm going to die on the cross. Are you ready to give that sacrifice? Are you ready to get let go of me as son? And I'm going to start this ministry as the son of God. 
Are you ready? That's what's being said here. And then he says simply, my hour has not yet come. What he's saying there, he's saying, Mom, I don't have to do it now. If you're not ready, I don't have to do it. Have you ever thought about that? Jesus started his ministry not when he wanted to, but when Mom was ready. Have you ever thought about the kind of honor he gave his mom? We're having Mother's Day next week, folks. That's some honor he just gave his mom. He said, my hour has not yet come, mom. <laughs> but if you're ready to give me up, okay. He says, I can wait. If you're not ready, mom, if you're not ready to give up our father, or our mother-son relationship, I can wait. This may not be the time for us to have a new and different relationship. So that's what the response was from Jesus. This may not be the time for you to make that kind of change. I can wait. These people, they, you know, I, they can just deal with their shame for a while. I mean, they caused the problem, right? But what did Mary say then? Mary says, he turns to the serve. She turns to the serve and says, do whatever he tells you. You realize what she's saying right there? I'm ready. It's time, Jesus. I knew when I gave birth, you were different. And now is the time to begin. I'm ready to give you up as my physical son. And I'm ready to give you up and let you start being the son of God to the world that you were prophesied to be. That's what Mary was saying when she said, when she looks away from Jesus, do what he says. She says, I'm ready. It's time for the son of God to begin. It's time to make the change. Her statement has applications far beyond that immediate time. Folks, I think Mary's talking to me and you when she says, do everything this guy says. I think Mary was talking to the people at the party as well as talking to me and you. This is now the Son of God. He's no longer just the Son of Mary. He's now the Son of God. Do everything this guy tells you to do. Because he can fix all situations. He can fix the sin problem you have. He can fix the depression you have. He can fix the loneliness. Whatever problem you're having, he's the fixer. But you have to do what he says. Obey him. It's true for them 2,000 years ago at that party. And it's true for me and you today. Look at verses 6 through 10. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. And Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from. <coughs> Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. So what we find out is Jesus, the Son of Man, Jesus, the Son of Mary, Mary's little boy, we find out he saved the day. He saved the day. He used not any powers of man. He used the powers of God to rescue the situation. We see where Jesus was wanted at the party. People wanted him there because he, we bring Jesus to our party and he's going to give incredible blessings. He's going to make the joy happen. And he demonstrates ultimate compassion for the bride, the groom, and the parents, and his mom. Giving honor to her. Mary sacrificed her son in that moment so that people could be rescued. He ch she changed her relationship so that he could rescue the situation. Jesus was honorable, loving of all the other people and respectful of his mother, not rude. Jesus, 
who was the son of man, the son of Mary, baby's little boy, Mary's little boy. But now he's the son of God. He has the power to heal the most negative of any situation you're facing. He has control over nature and natural consequences. He has control over it. He took water and made it into wine. That's a natural process. He did it like that. He has control completely over nature. He has the authority over all of creation. He is both God and flesh in one. He's both the Son of God and the Son of Man. And that's the picture that John is giving us here of Jesus. Look at verses 11 through 12. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. There they stayed for a few days. In other words, what John is saying here, this picture of Jesus I've just given you. The guy who is both son of God and son of man. He was Mary's son, but no longer. Now he's the son of God. He, and all this, and he said all of that compassion, the healing of the people and everything. He says, you ain't seen nothing yet. This is just the first sign. This is just the beginning. He saved the wedding party. But John said, that's just the first of a whole lot of signs coming. Watch how he's going to affect other people's lives. Watch how he's going to save other people's dignity. Watch how he's going to save other people's souls. Watch how he's going to take the shame and the guilt away from other folks. This is just the beginning. This is the first of many. John is saying, you've known the Son of Man. You've known he's Mary's son for years. You just got exposed to the Son of God. And watch out because you... Just wait, there's a whole lot coming and it's going to blow your mind what you're going to see. That's what John is painting here in this second picture. He wants to take Jesus and let everybody know this is just the kickoff. It's a transition has just taken place here. John's trying to let you know he just turned water into wine. That's a massive transition. You just saw a son of man go to son of God. You're about to find God's glory exposed in the years to come. Keep reading. It's like John is saying, keep reading. You're going to find so many more signs that's going to tell you who Jesus is. But so far what John has pictured is that he is a beautiful son of of man and son of God. Jesus cares for you. He doesn't want you to have to suffer with guilt or indignity or shame. What we learn in this passage is that Jesus has compassion for you. He wants to give you dignity and respect. He wants to bring you joy in your life. Some of you have done so many dishonorable things. And Jesus is saying, I want to restore your honor. He wants you to acknowledge that he is man and God. That's what he wants and needs from you. He wants you to take that faith And he wants to cleanse your past and your future. That's why in Romans 10 it says confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Because when you believe it and you confess it, he's going to take that faith. And he's going to to baptize you in the waters. And he's going to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. And all the past failures is going to be gone. As long as you live faithful with him, he's going to take care of all of the future sins you do too. He wants you to join His family. He wants you to join in Him and be heirs to His kingdom. The Son of God stands ready to transform you and to change your life. And that is the portrait that John gives us here in this particular sermon, in this particular portrait. The lesson is yours. 
If you need to be transformed this morning, if you have done some horrible things in your life, Jesus stands ready to fix it. You can come forward and be baptized and have it all washed away. If you need to come forward and just maybe you're going through some tough trials, and you need to come forward and say, Lord, I'm having a problem in my life. I've been saved, but life is getting really tough. Then maybe you need to be like Mary and come forward and bring the problem to Jesus and let him take care of it for you. You can do that. Uh, do we have enough to have one? Well, okay. So we do. We will have an elder station in the back and we'll have an elder station in the front. If you go to the back, that's a private prayer. If you want to talk privately with an elder, you don't want it all over, you can go there. But if you want to come forward and let everybody know, there will be an elder up here to uh, welcome you as well. Whatever your need is, come forward now as we stand and sing together. <clears throat> Have you a heart that's weary, tending a load of care? Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the burden you bear? Do you know? You know, my friend, have you heard he loves you and that he will abide to the Do you know, my Jesus? Do you know, my friend? Have you heard he loves you and that he will abide to thee? Do you know, my Jesus? Do you know, my friend? Have you heard he loves you and that he will abide to thee? church. <clears throat> Thank you, Stan, for that message this morning. Powerful, powerful words. Jesus, Mary began Jesus' salvation or his, his, his journey. We're going to look a little more about Mary next week when we talk about Mother's Day, so we welcome everyone back for next week. We do have some prayer requests we want to um, 
mention this morning and pray about. Uh, and one welcome I forgot. Yvette Adams is back with us. We, we welcome the Yvette back this morning. So, Mary Luxton stepped forward and handed me a note this morning requesting prayers for, for the, from the church for strength in dealing with situations and interactions with people that I submit to God in everything. So we want to pray for Mary this morning as well as Brother Novi. He sinned and I repent of those sins. Pray for me this week as I make decisions that were blessings that I use that I use discernment and understanding. The devil has really been trying with him. And he's, he's asking for prayer and God to help in his decision making this week. So he's got some decisions to make. So we're going to ask the Lord for prayers there. Amen. And also we had a Facebook note. Um, Bob Campbell is asking for prayers for his family as they're dealing with some COVID situations. So, um, and Sandra um, submitted a note asking prayers for her mother as her dementia worsens and also she is having some health concerns. So let's go to our Father in a word of prayer. Yes. Luke went through her procedure and she wants to thank the church for prayers on her behalf. Okay. Prayers of thanks. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, God Almighty, we, we come before you this morning lifting our hearts and souls up to you in prayer. Father, we ask that you hear these prayers, Lord, and that you grant the answers as you see fit for our individuals. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity that you gave us through your Son, Jesus Christ, to be able to come before you, Lord, and to be able to request these prayers. Father, Sister Mary Luxton this morning is asking for prayers of the church. She's asking for strength so that she may find ways to deal with situations with people that she's encountered with. She works through you. She's a servant of you, Lord. She's a hard worker here in the church, and we pray that you give her the strength and the guidance that she's looking for. We know that she is faithful to you, and we pray that she gets the answers she's looking for, Lord. Brother, we lift up Brother Novi to you as he again repents of, repents of his, his sin, Lord, and, and now is seeking guidance. Guidance in your word, guidance in your blessings. As he is constantly being challenged, and we all are being challenged daily, Lord, and he has some decisions to make, and he just hopes that you're with him in that decision-making process. That you give him the wisdom and the guidance that he needs to, to do what is right, Lord. To do what is best for his situation. And to do what is pleasing in your sight. Father, we pray for Annette Gentry this morning as she looks for assistance in an automobile. May, may something that will work in that situation come about. Sandra, Father, ask for prayers for her mother as she continues to struggle with a, a disease and, and Sandra struggles with health conditions as well. Bob Campbell requests prayers for his family as they deal with some COVID situations. And Lord, we know there are others. We know there are many that are in need of prayer. We know there are many that are in need of healing. And we pray that, as Reuben mentioned this morning, as Lupi received success from her prayers, we just pray that 
we get that answer. We get that feedback too. That we have folks that say, I've asked for prayer and it's been answered. I've asked for prayer personally and it's been answered. And Lord, we know you answered prayers and we know we just need to be patient and realize that those prayers are answered in your time. Father God, as we lift these individuals up to you, we pray as a body of believers that we can find ways to support and help those who are in need. We find ways to give them comfort here on earth, knowing that you will give them comfort from heaven. Father, we pray that you let us work in their lives so that they can see the power of your work through us. Help us to reach out to them. Help us to comfort them. And I ask all these prayers in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Just a, a quick reminder about the closed closet assistance needed on May 13th. Um, please sign up on the bulletin or on the, on the bulletin board out front. And again, if uh, if you can assist in that problem, if you can assist in that effort, it's it's thankful. Uh, we do have a, a party here this afternoon at three o'clock. Um, we have a baby shower, so everyone that's attending that, we hope that that goes well. And uh, it's a joyful opportunity to, to uh, celebrate a new young family. Is there anything else on Facebook that anybody saw? No, no other messages? Okay. Again, we thank you for being here. If, you have a rec if you're visiting with us, please let us greet and meet you. And I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon. And we look forward to seeing you all back at our next appointed time. So let's go to our Father and dismiss with a note. Father God, again, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for the message. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you for the songs. Not a lot of people have the opportunity to face the congregation while Reuben is singing behind you, Lord, but it's just a wonderful experience. It's something that uh, you just can't explain. The man has a gift of, of singing, and we just thank him for, for bringing that with us each, each Sunday. He has that opportunity. And there's other brothers that do the same, Lord. But Reuben really sings out. Lord, we thank you so much for this, this body of believers. We thank you for the work they do here at Holmes Road. We pray that you watch over them, that you keep them healthy, you keep them safe. Help us through these trying times, Lord, these times of post-COVID, pre-COVID, whatever COVID situation we might be in. Just, just help us, Lord, to do the best with whatever we're faced with. Help us to know that, just to put it in your hands, and then it'll be taken care of. Lord, we pray that you be with this country as it deals with the struggles of, of overseas, as it deals with the struggles of, on our land. You be with its leaders. You be with our president. You be with our leaders here in this community, and you be with us here at Holmes Road, Lord. We just pray that you help us to make decisions that are good for people, that are good for mankind. We help us to make decisions that are good to show you in this world, to show those lost souls that you exist, to show them that the only way to you is through your son, Jesus Christ, and that we are, we are shining examples. We are lights, beacons on the hill, Lord, so that we bring people closer to you. Help us, Father, to do that. Help us to follow your commission. Thank you, God, for the opportunities you've given us. Thank you for this church. And thank you for your son, Jesus, for that sacrifice he made. And it's in his blessed name that I ask this prayer. Amen.